Who's ready to up their dating game? You betcha, yeah! yeah. <laughs> Our next guest says you might be able to finally get what you want with a little help from your ex. Join us today to explain a certified sex educator, relationship expert, and author of The Game of Desire, Five Surprising Secrets to Dating with Dominance and Getting What You Want. Please welcome Shannon Boudram to the show. Welcome, oh. Shannon. Welcome. Shannon. So talk to me about the ways in which you want to change how women may look at dating. Yes, so I just got married last year at Congrats. age 33, thank you. Um, and I noticed the big mistake that I was making is one that many women make, we're waiting. We're waiting to get chosen, we're waiting to get spoken to, we're waiting to get called back. Like we are not in the driver's seat of our own intimate connections. This is a massive part of our life and so much that equates to our own happiness. So why aren't we driving it forward and actually getting into the driver's seat again and we're finding and going after, after exactly, yeah. yes. All right, Put a little so, red so how do you do that? Tell us, tell us how we do that then. Knowing yourself is massively important and language is so important. So it's important to know yourself, You know get the help that you need, do quizzes, assessments, et cetera, but the mirror cannot see itself. That means you need advanced feedback from somebody. And yes, our friends and family can be a great tool, but they also don't wanna be too mean to us. Our exes, however, <laughs> they mark the spot. They know exactly what our intimate flaws are because we also have our own deal breakers going on inside of us that we not, may not be aware of. So your ex can actually be a really illuminating factor in discovering what you may need to improve on for healthier connections going forward. So how do you broach? Well, I, I'm just trying to think. You're not like, talking about calling the ex yeah, and saying, so, so you where did I mess up on you? Are you know them? Like, how do you broach this topic with your ex? I'm just trying to see how this plays out. Yeah, you would just use a psychological technique in which you ground it in a greater message and say, I'm really working on myself this year. And I really want to talk to you because I've always found you insightful. I'm trying to make better connections going forward. I have a few questions to ask you. It's not about closure. It's just about me actually improving because I'm on a path for self-improvement. And with that in mind, I think all of the defenses go down and the person approaches the call. You only ask an ex, mind you, who you knew was good to during mm -hmm. the relationship. The person who didn't want the best for you while you were together is not the person to go to for this exercise. Um, Thank you for that clarification. Yes. Helpful. <laughs> All right, so what's the next tip? So after you know who you are and you know what you have to change, you've identified your source fractures and really made an effort to say, who is my best self? You gotta learn some new things and practice some new tips. And I think of flirting as just communication plus sparks. And this is the thing, you can't go, if you're a basketball player and dunk in the fourth quarter, if you're not practicing all the time in the gym. So flirting is not just for that person that you, your heart goes crazy for. It's for your everyday interactions. And so it's a part of how you now just go out into the world, creating communication plus sparks. And so an easy way to do that is through eye contact, as we all know. But here's a little extra tip on that one. So if I look you directly in the eye, it's a sign of respect. If I look away from you, it's a sign of disinterest or of fear. But if I look you directly in the eye and then let my eyes trail down and then back up to your eyes, that's a sign of attraction. So maybe at your local Starbucks, you could just give someone the eye triangle, <laughs> see how it feels. If You're good at that, that by yeah, the way. Yeah, she did that so well. I'm really good at that. I'm going to try that could create some sticky situations. I mean, I so. would try that in clinic, for example. No. I like it, though. All right, last tip. The last tip is once you know, ex desire is not something that is manual for everybody. It doesn't just happen. When we first get into relationships, of course, our biology is doing all the work for us. All that adrenaline is pumping. But after that, and your love turns more companionate, now again, you have to get into the driver's seat of your desire. And so I suggest if your love life or sex life has gotten stale, learn your partner's turn on triggers. Not dissimilar from love languages, it's knowing that foreplay is not just about touch, it's what happens before you get into the bedroom. As a matter of fact, a lot of things that we deem foreplay are actually core play for women, so let's actually reframe that. Um, but foreplay are the things that we can do to get our partner on the same romantic page as us. Like cooking for your wife. Like cooking for it your works, wife, yes. It works for me. Clean it up a little it bit. Works for you, Mr. Newlywed, Dr. Newlywed. I cook. Yeah. You know, I do, I do, I try to do dogs, the things you're supposed to do. Plays with the dog. Do my chores, yeah. take care of the dogs, make sure the trash goes out. Every now and then do it with my shirt off, you know? Yes. <laughs> Dr. Travis, they oh, call that chore you. play. Chore play. Chore play. So it has a title, I love it. <laughs> Well, yeah. honey, I'm going to chore play tonight, so you better be ready. <laughs> <laughs> Great advice, and you're in luck in the audience. You're all going home with a copy of Shannon's new book, The Game of Desire.